Hello, I'm going to go through the exercises relating to BLAST similarity searches and multiple sequence alignment. 1. In GeneBank, run a protein BLAST of Zika virus polyprotein um, ID given. Change the default settings such that you get 10 hits rather than the default, which is 100. So before we go any further and see what the, what to do with the results, we might just as well set it up like this. Opening a new browser window, search for GeneBank. Now, in protein, we enter that ID, which I have copied from the instructions, and I hit search to go to the right entry directly. Now you can see in this window on the right hand side there's a link to the BLAST suite. So clicking on it will get us directly into the standard protein BLAST because we have searched for a protein. So we can use this almost by default but if we have to change something of course we have to unfold the algorithm parameters and to go the I think the default was 100 and if we go to 10 this is the output that we want and that's mainly for legibility because 10 is much easier to see than look at 100 results so and if we then go to blast and do the search we'll have to wait a little bit while we see the update window telling us about the status of the search. And now that the search is finished, uh, we can scroll down a little bit and slightly smaller, getting to the results. Now look at the instructions of what we are supposed to do with the results. In the graphic summary, click on the conserved domains display and in the list of domain hits, find and write the names of two domains that refer to RNA polymerase. And we also get their respective accession IDs. So we can do that. We can see our descriptions. The graphic summary is the second tab. And just giving it a click on the overview, uh, we can also get the conserved domains as a list. I'm just scrolling down to see the complete list of domain hits. Now to find anything that has to do with RNA polymerase, I just, just do a simple text search polymerase and just a few letters will be sufficient. I can see two hits uh, with RNA polymerase as a keyword in them. So for a result of the question that we were supposed to do, I copy and paste the first and put that as a result. Go back to our uh, domain hits and copy and paste the second. And here we have our two results. First is Flavivirus. RNA-directed RNA polymerase. Second result is RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, RDRP. And the first one from a thumb database and the second from CD, which is the conserved domains data within NCBI gene bank. Two, run a DNA blood in ensemble on the HK1 gene. How good is the overlap with some protein? So we have to go to ensemble, look for the HK1 gene and run a blood on the DNA sequence. So let's try to do that. So we open a new window, go to ensemble gene browser, if it's human, we select human. And the best is to put the correct genome in, which is HK1. Now in the entry, the gene 
What is the gene ID? We saw for the BLAST it's good to always have the accession ID. That's the safest way to get to the correct. So the gene ID is ENSG, ENS ensemble, gene ID, ENSG. So I copy that and I click on BLAST. Any previous jobs I delete and then into the search sequence data I put that gene ID. So that will directly copy the FASTA uh, DNA nucleotide sequence there. Then we're going to have a search on that. And we're going to compare that, of course, with the DNA database doing a blood search as instructed. So it means we don't have anything to do. We just hit run and we have to wait while the search is going on in the background. This window will show us, uh, will update us on the status and cute means that we need to be patient. Okay, our search is finished. So we can see here in that green box we have 100 hits and clicking on it will give us a list of those hits. And of course, I don't remember what the exact question was. How good is the overlap with cholesterol ester transfer protein? So what could that be? So if we look into our list, we don't find it. We search for cholesterol, but with a little bit of imagination, we can imagine that CETP is the one that we are looking for. So we can as well click on it and see what it does. And if we open the result, it's cholesterol ester transfer protein. So it's the one that we are looking for. So it's this uh, result here. And if we scroll to the right, we can see the percent overlap is 89.11%. So 89% is our result. And we can keep it like this. And then it asks where is that located? So that protein, that CETP, where is it located? So of course it doesn't say here, but we go on the corresponding entry. Under location we can see where it is. Namely, it's according to the current standard, that's 2020. I'll just copy that and put that into my template. It's located on chromosome number 16 and it's on the forward strand base pair uh, 56 millions upwards. Three, perform a multiple sequence alignment with Clastal Omega. Use the example sequences offered by the homepage. Inspect the alignment. Are the sequences well conserved? So it's a natural question for multiple sequence alignment. Let's click on that page and get a new browser window. Clustal Omega is correct. And if we just go down, then we can see here's our search. No, here's our the place where we can enter our query. And being instructed to take the examples from that web page already, we can click on use example sequences. So if we inspect the page here that has now by default entered, you can see that one, two, three sequences and there will be a multiple sequence alignment on those three sequences. Um, we go with the default settings and we don't want to be notified by email. So just clicking on go will get our job running and we need to wait a couple of moments before we can see the results. Right, once the results are there, I have already made it slightly bigger so we can see the results better and clicking on show colors will make the display a little bit nicer where we can see the three sequences on top of each other and we have marked with a star where there is identity in all three. So what we can see from the lack of stars in many locations, this is not a very good 
agreement, so it's not the same thing in those three that have been aligned here. But we can also see that specifically in the latter part down here, there's enough instances of uh, agreement between all three sequences that lets us assume that three, these three sequences come from a common ancestor. They are not accidentally looking so similar as we have it indicated here by the stars. So for a result, you could take a screenshot of this page and copy and paste it into the template for the answers of your exercise.